This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. Unfortunately, due to weather conditions, we lost what could have been a lot of really great racing this weekend, a couple of important races for the three-year-olds out in Southern California. Uh, you know, Saturday, unfortunately, on the East Coast, we lost some racing at Laurel, where they had a stake, Turfway Park in the Midwest, and of course, because of torrential rain, they lost the card on Saturday. So we got a little bit of an abbreviated program today for you, but we still have some terrific racing, and it does appear that most of those stakes races will be recarded for next week or possibly during the week this week, so we'll keep an eye out for those. In the meantime, we'll head down to Florida, where on Saturday they had a terrific card of racing, a full card of racing, in fact, and we'll start things out with grade one runners on the turf in the Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap. They're all in line. They're racing in the Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap. The grand crew, as expected, out for the early lead. Take the points away well to the outside. Between those two, it's Yates Black Cat, and Adagio goes up outside of them. Court Vision's going to tuck in fifth early. Court Vision sits four and a half lengths off the lead with a lap to go. And then the French invader, never on Sunday, who's got nine lengths to make up. The grand crew moves into that first turn in front, going along at a deliberate pace in front by a length and a half. First quarter posted in 23 and one fifth seconds, and now he's going to scamper off to a two and a half length lead here. Take the point second, Adagio third to the outside, then Yates Black Cat, Court Vision right alongside of him. He's now outside of horses and five and a half lengths off of the front runner, Le Grand Crew. The trailer never on Sunday is nine behind as they continue up the backstretch, the half 46 and two. Le Grand Crew and Jose Lescano, two lengths in front. Take the points, Adagio to the outside, Yates Black Cat is being nudged along between those two, Court Vision traveling well. He's fifth and outside of runners with three and a half to make up, and it's four lengths back to Never on Sunday in the back. Le Grand Crew has made the pace every step of the way, he's in front by a length and a half. Long shot at Daggio is second. Take the points on the inside. Third court vision now being asked for more run. Never on Sunday. Circling up on the far outside. And hesitated there at the top of the stretch, but he's coming on now. Le Grand Crew down to the eighth pole. Take the points. Court vision to the outside. Yates Black Cat at Daggio. Far outside. Never on Sunday. Into the final 16th. Take the points in front. Court vision. Never on Sunday. Take the points. Has the lead. Take the points, and Edgar Prado have won the Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap over Court Vision, never on Sunday, and La Grand Crew was fourth. And to start the program off, a disqualification. Of course, that was take the points, scoring the victory by a length and a half. But uh, after a considerable uh, time, after the stewards took a look into the stretch run, they did decide that uh, take the points and Edgar Prado did, in fact, interfere with Yates' black cat, who appeared to be trying to duck in between horses under Kent Asormo. Uh, Yates' black cat quite obviously did, uh, you know, did lose his footing rather dramatically. And uh, as a result, the stewards did opt to take down, take the points, which certainly is a disappointment. Of course, local connections with the Starlight Partners uh, owning this horse, but uh, he's already a grade one winner, and I know it's all often difficult. Of course, it's hard to lose a grade one race this way, but uh, he certainly ran very well, and I think that it will bode well for continued success this year as a four-year-old. In the meantime, Court Vision, who was kind of ranging up on the outside but really not making up any ground on the winner, does end up being moved up into the, into the top spot. Never on Sunday, who kind of blew the break in his, uh, or not the break rather, but the turn on his American debut, coming in from Newmarket, where his uh, most recent performance took place last fall. You know, I thought that this horse coming around the turn kind of looked like he almost lost his footing a little bit. And when Joe Bravo took him out wide, he was rallying very, very strongly. And uh, he ends up getting moved up to second. LeGrand Crew, the pacemaker, gets to hold on uh, into, he held on for fourth and gets moved up to third. The winner, Court Vision, is a dark bay or brown son of Gulch from Weekend Storm by Stormbird, bred in Kentucky by William S. Farish and Kilroy Partnerships, owned by IEAH Stable. 
Resolute Group Stable and Windstar Farm, trained by Richard Dutrow. This is a horse that last fall was only beaten a length and a half by Goldicova in the Breeders' Cup Mile, so obviously a horse with a considerable amount of ability. He won the Remsen at two. At the age of three, he won the Grade One, Ho grade one Hollywood Derby. Last year, the Shadwell Turf Mile, and now begins his five-year-old campaign with a victory in the Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap. Court Vision under Robbie Alvarado gets the victory in covering the nine furlongs in 146.84. We'll head into grade one company for older horses on the main track, the nine furlong Don for four and up. Rolling line. They're off in the Don and quality road broke great. He goes right to the front and past the point is sent along by Edgar Prado and past the point's going to go up and grab the lead from quality road early and quality road content to sit second into the turn. And it's Mambo Meister outside of Duke of Mischief. Kiss the kids in a bit of a tight spot there. And Mr. Amore moving up alongside Dubai Gold now moves up alongside. It's a gap of another five and a half lengths. Back to Dry Martini. El Sinki is next. Delightful Kiss trails the field as they move to the back stretch. The first quarter was 23 and two foot seconds. It's past the point in front. Quality Road sitting in second position, letting past the point make the pace. Quality Road is still right there in contention. It's four lengths back to Mambo Meister. Then Duke of Mischief kissed the kid alongside. Three and a half back, and then comes Dubai Gold. They're being followed four lengths more by Dry Martini. Delightful kiss out of last and now moving by him. And Helsinki trails the field a 46 flat half mile. They're at the half mile pole. Past the point, the leader by a half length. John Velasquez has Quality Road right alongside now. Quality Road draws up alongside of past the point with three furlongs to go. They ran three quarters in 109 and four, and Quality Road takes the lead on the outside. Past the point, back to second by another four. Mambo Meister is next. Duke of Mischief on the inside. Then kiss the kid. Quality Road turns for home with a three-length lead in the Don Handicap. It's Quality Road by the eighth pole. He's opening up at will here. It's a six-length lead. It's an eight-length lead. It's a ten-length lead. It's a twelve-length lead. It's Quality Road. Oh, oh, look at him go. Quality Road rolls home in the dawn. In one minute, 47.49 seconds, he broke the track record today. Then came Dry Martini. Delightful kiss on the outside, but it was Quality Road and an absolute runaway performance by Quality Road, who always looked like an extremely good runner. He's now six for nine lifetime. Of course, you'll remember his terrific performances down in Florida last spring. Unfortunately, he missed the Triple Crown Trail, was transferred into the barn of Todd Pletcher over the summertime, came back with a couple of very good performances, winning the Amsterdam, a good third in the Travers, second in the Gold Cup, the Jockey Club Gold Cup, and then, of course, you, I'm sure, remember his meltdown at the Breeders' Cup at the starting gate. And, uh, you know, things obviously not looking real good there. But they sent him down to Florida. They sent him in for some training and some extra uh, TLC at the starting gate. He did give them a little bit of trouble, but nothing really serious at the, uh, at the gate on Saturday. And loaded in just fine. Took off in the, uh, in the early stages, breaking well, allowing the early pacemaker past the point to go out and set the lead. He sat in a perfect stalking trip, and by the top of the stretch, he was simply home free. He cruises home by almost 13 official lengths. Dry Martini rallies strongly to finish in the second spot, and delightful kiss about a length back in third. The winner, Quality Road, won the Hal's Hope very impressively here last time going a mile and is now a new track record holder here at the nine furlongs, having broken from post four and never taken a poor step throughout the course of the race. An outstanding performance by this just turned four-year-old. Quality Road is a base on of elusive quality from Cobla by Strawberry Road. He was bred in Virginia by Edward P. Evans and is owned by the breeder. Trained by Todd Pletcher, winning the victory by John Velasquez. Quality Road sets the new track record for a mile and a furlong in the Don, 147.49. The final race of the card on Saturday afternoon was a really nice stakes race for fillies and mares on the turf. Let's head back to Florida, fillies and mares in the Suwannee River. And they're all in line. They're racing in the Suwannee River.
In My Glory goes right out to the front, immediately speeding off from Tani, who's out running in second, long approach, third to the inside. Moving up on the outside is Good Time Sally, then it's Astrology and Cable, followed by Indigo North on the outside, and in the back are Sweet and Flawless and Aranus. It's In My Glory. In My Glory, a long shot will make the lead as they race for the first turn, and Tani sits right behind her, a length and a half back in second. And then to the inside, it's Long Approach running in third position. Good Time Sally fourth to the outside. Behind them, Astrology is racing six lengths off the lead. And it's Indigo North, Cable along the rail. Second last is Aranus, Sweet and Flawless Trails. As they go to the back stretch, the quarter was 24 and 3. And In My Glory is out there by herself, opening up a three-length lead on Tutty. Long approach on the inside. Good time, Sally, outside of them. The half was an easy 50 and four-fifth seconds. Then it's Astrology, followed by Indigo North to the outside. Cable, Aranus, and Sweet and Flawless is last. Easy pace for long shot In My Glory and Jesus Castagnon. They lead the charge into the far turn with Tani edging up just a bit closer now. They're three-quarters of a length behind. Good time, Sally, third to the outside, long approach, waits at the rail, runs along in fourth, two lengths off the lead. In between horses comes Indigo North. As they come to the top of the stretch, it is still In My Glory, who's led every step of the way. In My Glory turns for home in front, Toddy to the outside. Long approaches in traffic right behind them along the rail. Good time, Sally is next. Astrology comes splitting horses. Indigo North on the far outside, sweet and flawless. And Cable, who's closing late on the inside. But Tani, Tani has won the Swanee River. Cable was second, tight for third in my glory, or sweet and flawless on the outside. Tani gets the victory. A nice effort by this filly who sat a perfect stalking trip every step of the way and holds on by about three quarters of a length over Cable. Now that filly did have some traffic trouble in the stretch. Finally got cleared, just missed here. The early pacemaker in my glory holds on well to finish third at 45 to one. The winner, Toddy, in her second race in the United States has now gone two for two since arriving in uh, the U.S. Toddy is a Bay filly, a daughter of fantastic light from Katie Nowady by Comady, bred in Great Britain by the Lawn Stud and owned by J.H. Richmond Watson, trained by local uh, uh, product Chad Brown, who has had continued success since beginning his career a couple of years ago after an apprenticeship under a number of major trainers, of course, including Bobby Frankel, who uh, he was a, an, a leading assistant trainer for, for a couple of years before going out on his own. The winner, Toddy, under one of Chad's main go-to riders, Jose Lescano, covers the mile and a furlong in 150.34. We'll head back to Gulfstream now. There's Sunday Stakes feature on the turf for three-year-olds in the Hollandale Beach. And they're all in line. They're off. Asphalt on the inside broke well. Bim Bam is out showing some early speed, too, and then comes Cat Park to their outside. Interactif is fourth early and just off the leaders. Then Thunder Brew in between horses. Our champion, Dean's Kitten, to the inside. Dean's Kitten's a little bit hard to handle there into the turn. Lucas Brady trails the field and is five lengths off the lead. They're going at a deliberate pace here with Bim Bam, the leader. Bim Bam on top through a quarter of 24 and three-fifth seconds. And Interactif is right there and pulling hard on the outside second. Cat Park in behind the leaders third. Asphalt fourth along the rail. Our champion is just outside of them. Two and a half lengths off the lead. Then it's Dean's Kitten going up between horses. Thunder Brew wants to go. It is down on the inside with no room. And Lucas Brady trails a compact field. Four and a half lengths separate them all. The half was 49 and four. Again, not much pace on here. Bim Bam and Interactif a half length apart. On the front end. And then it's our champion outside of Cat Park and Asphalt. Dean's Kitten right behind them. Only two and a half links off the lead. And now sent along outside of him is Lucas Brady. And Thunder Brew waits at the rail. Around the far turn. Bim Bam. Interactif. Long shot our champion just outside the leaders at the top of the stretch. Asphalt is in behind them running in fourth. Then it's Cat Park. Dean's Kitten on the outside. Thunder Brew coming up the fence and they're into the stretch. And it's still Bim Bam and Interactif. Bim Bam digs in. Interactif on the outside trying to get by him. Interactif. Bim Bam keeps fighting. But it's Interactif and Bim Bam coming back on the inside. 
very close finish in the Hallandale Beach. Then Dean's Kitten and Asphalt. Bim Bam gets the victory. A little bit of an upset. 10.60 as he scores over the odds-on choice. Interactif scoring by a nose. It was an, another couple of lengths back to Asphalt and Dean's Kitten on the wire. It was Asphalt getting the nose down in time to settle for third. The winner, Bim Bam, was second last time out in a nice performance behind Nordic Truce in the Dania Beach. He faced some pretty nice horses on the main track last year, including the likes of Jackson Bend while running through that series in the Florida Bread Races and the Stallion Series races down there, as well as a couple of open stakes as well. So he'd obviously faced some nice horses and had run well, got good tactical speed, and uses it here on the turf. The winner, Bim Bam, is a bay son of Deputy Wildcat from Laurel Light by Colony Light, bred in Florida by J.D. Farms and owned by the breeder, trained by David Brownlee and ridden to victory by Ibar Coa. Bim Bam covers the mile and a 16th in 142.07. We'll stay in Florida. We'll head to Tampa Bay Downs in Saturday's stakes feature. Not often that a lot of people are really focused on a $50,000 Saturday stakes race at uh, going seven furlongs at Tampa Bay Downs, but the Super Stakes featured the return to the races of Musket Man. Let's head down to Florida, get the call. For the Super Stakes. And they're off. Musket Man on the outside. He's away sharply, and there goes Chief Takitna. Charging through down along the inner rail, now moving up the challenge along with Conjecture. And the last horse away is the late running Dinner and Odom. They move out of the long seven for long shooter and hook up with the main track. Chief Takitna is now going to the lead war fighter. Right there between horses second, Musket Man. Up on the outside, he's four deep and racing third. Conjecture is there toward the rail. Westland is advancing to challenge. Guam Typhoon is only four lengths off the pace setter. And then it's a long ways back to Denner and Odom. And now the pace quickens as they swing around the far turn. War fighter along the rail, Chief Takitna. Conjecture right there between horses. Musket Man, he remains four deep, being handled confidently by Daniel Centeno. Guam Typhoon is now being set down for the drive with a quarter of a mile to run. Musket Man now strikes to the lead. He'll have to hold off Guam Typhoon with quick acceleration on the outside, and now these two move clear. Musket Man, Daniel Centeno gets busy on the outside. Guam Typhoon runs at the leader second. Chief Takide is third. Inside the final for long. Musket Man is digging in gamely. Guam Typhoon on the outside and those two will come to the wire. Heads apart. Musket Man brought back after the nine month layoff terrifically by Derek Ryan will take it by a neck in 123 over a very game. Guam Typhoon. And Musket Man does get the job done in a nice effort by a half length forging to the front over Guam Typhoon who I thought ran a very big effort here. The two of them hooked up near the top of the stretch and uh, took it down all the way down to the line. They were about 10 lengths in front of the third place finisher, Chief Talkeetna. Musket Man, of course, you may remember it. I, I find myself astounded by this horse just because his pedigree would indicate that he'd probably be nicest up to a mile. Here he comes into the Triple Crown Trail last year, finishing third in both the Derby and the Preakness. That afternoon, beaten only a length and a half by Rachel Alexandra. That's certainly a very nice performance by any horse. And Musket Man went to the sidelines after that effort and now returns going seven furlongs. You know, and, and although there were certainly no Rachel Alexandras in this race, there were certainly some very nice horses nonetheless. Guam Typhoon, fairly proven commodity, as is Chief Talkeetna and Dinner at Odom, who won his prep race for this as well. So some pretty good horses in the field. Nice to see Musket Man back in the picture now at the age of four. Musket Man is a dark bay or brown son of Yanaguska from Fortunesque by Fortunate Prospect, bred in Kentucky by Jim E. Nelson and Sergio D'Souza owned by Eric Fine and trained by Derek Ryan, ridden to victory by Daniel Centino. Musket Man covers the seven and 123.10. We'll pause now for a brief message. When we return, we've got more great stakes racing action. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to HNC. We'll continue now at the fairgrounds where on Saturday, unfortunately, they lost their turf card. They had a huge card. I believe they had 12 races. They lost the turf that day, which was too bad because their stakes race that day was a turf sprint, the black gold for three-year-olds. Unfortunately, went on the main track. It was still a fairly competitive field. Let's head down to the fairgrounds and the running of the black gold. Late scratch with three and non-runner in the gate. Way and running in the black gold stakes. Royal Express out to lean, Vito Felito. And we come back to Grand Slam Andre saluting Stormy, last of the quartet as they head to the half mile pole. Royal Express, the pilot for James Graham. Royal Express has gone two lengths clear of Vito Felito with under four furlongs to go in the black gold. Then Grand Slam Andre third as they enter the far turn. And saluting Stormy is some 12 lengths adrift off of Royal Express. A willing leader with under three furlongs to go. The opening quarter for Royal Express, 22 and four. Beat off Lido's shave the lead down to a length and a half. Grand Slam Andre toward the inside. Here's the quarter pole. And uh, saluting Stormy is last. They're into the stretch. Royal Express continues to hold on to this lead. Now they're in the final furlong and a half. Royal Express. Pulls away from Vito Felito, Grand Slam Andre third, but under pressure, then saluting Stormy. Coming inside the final half furlong, Royal Express in the black gold. James Graham for Spanky Broussard. Royal Express led throughout. Royal Express in 104 and 1 from the leading Felito, who was second, and then father back saluting Stormy. Royal Express gets the victory. A nice effort on the front end. This is a horse that won a main track allowance. Now winners of one last time out in his second start back off a bit of a freshening. Looked like the horse that would probably be most dangerous in, a, uh, in an off-the-turf situation as he was primarily a main track horse anyway. Gets the victory over Vito Felito with saluting Stormy back in third. The winner, Royal Express, is a three-year-old bay son of Royal Academy from Deposit Express by Deposit Ticket. Bred in Illinois by Richard F. Rudolph and owned by the breeder, trained by Joseph Broussard and ridden to victory by James Graham, Royal Express covers the five and a half and 104.38. Next up, we will head to Oak Lawn Park. Their Saturday stakes feature the $100,000 Essex. And they're off in the Essex Handicap. Jonesboro broke very sharply along the inside. Racing Brand now wants to challenge him with Crooks Bodget. The middle spot's gone his fourth. Racing Guy is way out on the outside in fifth, followed by Win Willie. Then it's ready, set, and trailing in the early going is Prom Shoes. They move on to the turn. Racing Brand is going to show the way. He's guided by about two. Jonesboro is second outside of him. Crooks Bodget. Another length and a half back, and ready, set, scoots through along the inside of Spots Gone. When Willie is between horses to the outside is Glamour Guy, and the trailer is Prom Shoes, the opening quarter, 24 seconds. They move down the back stretch with Racing Brand showing the way by two and a half. Crooks Bodge is still second, Jonesboro is third. Ready, set, scoots through along the rail in fourth. Middle of the track is Spots Gone. Then to the outside, Glamour Guy, Win Willie, and the trailer, Prom Shoes. Past a half mile in 49 seconds, very even pace here. And still it is Racing Brand showing the way. Crooks Bodgett running second, Jonesboro third. Also moving up down the outside, Glamour Guy and Spots Gone are both on the move. Win Willie now moving up alongside of Ready Set. Prom Shoes is still the trailer there on the final turn. Racing Brand continues to lead it. Crooks Bodgett is second, Jonesboro running in third. Ready Set moves up along the rail fourth. Win Willie trying to move up now after three quarters, 114 to one. Here they come into the stretch of the Essex, and it has been Racing Brand all the way here today. Crooks Bodge to second, Jonesboro third. Win Willie now trying to mount his rally in the middle of the track. The leader is Racing Brand trying to stage a major upset. Here comes Win Willie and Jonesboro now down the middle. Racing Brand leading it, however, and Racing Brand about to score a major upset here today. It's going to be Racing Brand to win the Essex. Handicap by about three and a half lengths when Willie gets up for second. Prom shoes close for third. Jonesboro was fourth. Racing Brand gets to the front and never looks back, romping by four. And this horse really almost looked like a winner right out of the gate. Once he was able to outsprint the very fast Jonesboro, who does not run nearly as well when he has to run from a stalking position, he looked like he could be very, very dangerous. He ends up opening up by four and a half as he scores over the late-moving win, Willie. 
who of course I'm sure you remember from some very nice performances last spring at Oak Lawn Park, Prom Shoes rallies from last to complete the top three. The winner racing brands actually got kind of an interesting story. He was bred by uh, William Sterritz, who is also his current owner. But if you look back into his past performances, you'll discover that last fall at Hawthorne, he was claimed away from the uh, breeder by Dolphus Morrison, who, of course, is the uh, man who had bred and originally owned none other than Rachel Alexandra. Mr. Sterritz dipped back in and reclaimed him off of a winning performance in December at Hawthorne, came back to Oaklawn, prepped him in an allowance race, which he won, and now goes into a hundred thousand dollar claiming or a hundred thousand dollar race no longer in for the claiming tag and he scores the victory with him a nice effort at uh, big mutual as well so kind of an interesting story the horse has now won six of his last eight races so uh, maybe it looks like a horse to keep your eye on down at oaklawn over the winter time racing brand is a bay gelding a son of awesome again from believe big brand by i can't believe Bred in Illinois by William Sterritz, now owned once again by Mr. Sterritz and trained by Scott Becker, ridden to victory by Chris Emmy. Racing brand covers the mile in a 16th of 146.13. We'll head out to Southern California now where after the torrential rains and mudslides that took place very close to uh, Santa Anita, they were able to get back on track for Sunday after losing the Saturday card. Sunday's stakes feature for uh, older horses, the San Antonio Handicap. Set for the San Antonio. And uh, away they go to a very good beginning. Along the inside, Mast Track setting off for the lead, but they're all lining up out here. Pick six in the gold color. Sluster's now is right there. Guy Janticus in the vanguard, too. On the far side, furthest land. He's going to have to go wide, but he's going right up alongside of the leaders. Just in behind him, Dakota Phone begins to improve his position. Philatelist is down at the rail. No more than four lengths off these leaders. Richard's Kid taken back towards the rear with now, 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 and Quasi Cobra the last two. Six lengths would cover the lot. They head to the three-quarter pole and Mass Track out where he likes to be, showing the way and Mass Track in front a length and a half, just at a sensible pace in the second spot is pick six. Down at the rail is Marsh side, Slews Tis now is fourth. Dakota Phone races between horses, down at the rail, Philatelist in the white cap, now five off that leader. Furthest land in the red cap on the far side. Then Guy Janticus been joined by Quasi Cobra. Now, 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 and Richard's Kid the last two, seven lengths would cover the lot. They have a half mile left to go, and still Mass Track and Mike Smith dictating things on the lead. They lead it by just over a length. Pick six is in second. Sluz is now in a good spot, third at the rail. Then Dakota Phone. Just in behind him comes Philatelist in the white cap, four lengths off them. Marsh side is in there as well. Then we come back to Furthest Land, who's now giving them five start as they start to sprint for home. Now, 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 Richard's kid is still last and got a good nine to make up. Heads a turn for home in the San Antonio, and Mass Track kicks on for home, tries to hold this lead, tackled by pick six now. Down the center, Dakota Phone, then it's Marsh side. Coming with a late run, here's Philatelist, Furthest Land, extreme outside. Richard's kid is flying, but maybe too late. They come for home now, and pick six hanging on. Look at Richard's kid Touched off Dakota Phone, it is close. Philatelist finish third. Richard's kid gets the victory, and it does look like now off of this performance, he is back in the picture for the Dubai World Cup. Richard's kid, who of course won last summer in very nice company at Del Mar, was one of the horses that I liked in the Breeders' Cup last year. He gets the victory by a head from well back off the pace with what is described in the, uh, in, the, in the comment line here as a furious rally, and I think that probably suits it quite nicely. He gets the win by a game head over Dakota Phone, who was 34-1 to in this spot. And there was a time back of a couple of years ago when Dakota Phone could often be counted on for a very big performance. Philatelist makes his American debut and finishes a solid third. I thought this horse really ran very well, outrunning his odds, considering he was just transferred to the United States, but he was a horse with considerable synthetic background in his native Europe. The winner, Richard's Kid, off a sixth place finish in the Breeders' Cup. He was third prior, a close third in the Goodwood, returns victorious now as he starts his five year old campaign. Richard's Kid is a dark bay or brown son of Lemon Drop Kid from Tough Broad by Broadbrush, bred in Maryland by Fitzhugh Limited, owned by Zabiel Racing International, and trained by Bob Baffert, 
ridden to victory by Garrett Gomez. It looks like he has punched his ticket for the Dubai World Cup with this victory, covering the nine furlongs in 149.05. We'll head back east now to the Big A, where Saturday's stakes feature was the whirl away for three-year-olds at a mile and a sixteenth. And they're off. And it's Pepe Nose. 85 and a 50, now moving up at the rail. But three-day rush is up there, along with Papa's nice cat. 85 and a 50. From that inside post position, we'll have the leap. 85 and a 50 going wide. 85 and a 50 being pulled up there on the outside by Jorge Chavez. 85 and a 50 is out of the race. As the field heads for the back stretch, it's Papa's nice cat leading Pepe Nose. Three day rush is in third, and a fleet again is fourth. The quarter went in 23 and three-fifths seconds. Papa's nice cat leads three-quarters of a length over Pepe Nose. Three-day rush in third, then the gray, a fleet again in fourth. The half mile went in 48 and three. Papa's nice cat leads by a neck. Pepe Nose on the outside in second. Two and a half lengths to three-day rush and a fleet again. Now they're moving around the far turn. Peppy Nose and Papa's Nice Cat. It's Peppy and Papa. Heads apart for the lead, coming for the quarter pole. Three day rush in third and a fleet again. Three quarters in one, 14 and three. Peppy Nose has got the lead. Three day rush now moves into second. Then it's a fleet again and Papa's Nice Cat. Peppy Nose in front with less than a furlong to the finish. Peppy Nose by three lengths. A fleet again on the outside of Three Day Rush. It's Pepe Nose with the lead. The lead's down to a length and a half, but Pepe Nose is going to win the world away. Pepe Nose, a fleet again, Three Day Rush. Pepe Nose getting the victory in a rather strangely run race. Uh, obviously, they had the, uh, the favorite, the heavy favorite at odds on, bolting on the first turn, 85 and a 50, who had run an explosive sprint about uh, three weeks ago in, uh, in right here in Aqueduct, stretches out, and I don't know what caused it to happen. Apparently, the horse did, in fact, have some sort of equipment problem. Uh, I was told that, the, uh, that it was reported that the bit broke and uh, that there were some, uh, obviously, some control problems. Georgie Chavez unable to manage him. He did bolt. He ended up jumping the outside fence, managed somehow to get back to his barn area as well. According to reports, he was cut up a little bit, but not seriously hurt, and I think that's positive news. Hopefully, Mr. Contessa, his trainer, will be able to get him back in good order for the Gotham upcoming in a few weeks. But obviously, that was the big story coming out of this race. The remainder of the fields ends up being led home by Pepe Nose. This is the horse that had run a solid second behind Buddy Saint in the Remsen last year, so we'll have to see if he's got a little bit of improving in him. The final time wasn't particularly fast or inspiring, but again, you got to keep in mind that uh, several of these horses did lose a lot of ground, and, you know, when you've got a loose horse on the racetrack, it does often cause, you know, riders to just abruptly take up just to make sure that, uh, you know, that they are not in any kind of a line of peril. So we'll see what happens uh, as Pepe Mo Nose moves forward. A fleet again rounds out the exacta with three-day rush up from Florida, finishing third after having been carried out into the first turn by the bolting favorite. The winner, Pepe Nose, is a Bay Gelding, a son of Stephen got even from Miracle Worker by seeking the gold. He's certainly got pedigree to go long. He was bred in Kentucky by G. Watts Humphrey and is owned by Philip Messina, trained by Tim Kreiser and ridden to victory by Richie Migliori. Good to see him back in the winner's circle after a uh, recent spill. Peppy Nose covers the mile in the 16th and 147.10. That'll wrap up a somewhat short program. I'm sure next weekend's edition of HNC is going to be rather extended because we'll probably see those stakes from California, from Maryland, and from Kentucky all loaded into next week's program. We hope you'll be able to join us once again next week as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.